All right, welcome back to the show. We've been talking basketball since the start of the show, and of course now we have our Kevin McPherson joining us. And Kevin, uh, you've covered this team uh, over the past couple of years. You've covered Eric Musselman, and now, of course, here we are about to cover an NCAA tournament for the first time since the 2017-2018 feeling. That's exciting, isn't it? Well, it is, because that's what your program is there for. Everybody wants to be a part of March Madness. Uh, the 68-team NCAA tournament field more specifically. There are other tournaments going on, but that's the one. And, you know, Arkansas for the longest time was accustomed to doing it every year. If you look at that 25-year span from Eddie Sutton and Nolan Richardson, two Hall of, Naismith Hall of Fame coaches, Arkansas got pretty spoiled as a program. This century, it hasn't been as good. Uh, Mike Anderson up, you know, raised the program up, got to three NCAA tournaments in his last five seasons and a couple of NITs. But now Eric Musselman, just in year two, not only gets Arkansas back, as you mentioned, Alyssa, but they're a three seed. I mean, you have to go back. I mean, it lines up with being ranked in the national top 10 in the AP poll. It, it lines up with winning 12 straight league games before Saturday when they fell shorthanded, by the way, uh, against LSU. But all of it lines up to the to early to mid 90s runs that Nolan Richardson had, which is the pinnacle of the program when you looked at the postseason that followed. So if you're a Razorback fan, you've got to be excited coming into this because you know when Arkansas's had regular seasons like this, it usually portended well in the postseason. Now we see what happens under Eric Melsman in year two. Well, that's the first time they are a three seed since, three seed since that 91-92 season. And a shout-out to Tara Talmadge for giving me that little nugget of a fun fact. But uh, when you look at this matchup now, Arkansas facing a Colgate team, which makes everyone do a quick Google search to figure out exactly who they are and where they come from. They're out of the Patriot League, and they're 14-1 and one on the year, but uh, that doesn't necessarily indicate exactly what this team does well. So quick little search on, on what Colgate does well and, and what kind of catches your eye. A couple of things. One is they win. They've won 13 in a row, so Arkansas, and, Arkansas fans understand that 12-game league winning streak. Well, Colgate, I don't care what league you're in. When you're used to winning – you, when you when you go 14 and one, you you come you grow accustomed to winning basketball and finding ways to win, uh, and so you're capable of making a run in the NCAA tournament. I don't care if you're 14 seed or not. This team also likes to push the basketball uh, and play an up tempo game, which I don't think is a problem for Arkansas. I think this Arkansas team uh, doesn't have a true identity. It can play up tempo. It can play a grind game. And it's found ways to win doing both. And so it's going to be an exciting game. But I think when you talk about the Colgate Raiders, what stands out to me more than any of that is that they entered Sunday ranked number nine in the NCAA net rankings. And we know that is the biggest analytic that the selection committee uses. It's what everybody mm -hmm. follows, that and the Associated Press poll, really. Uh, but number nine in the country, Arkansas entered number 14 in that. So if that doesn't put a little scare in the Razorback fans, you know, I don't know what will. You know, they're coming off that heartbreaking SEC loss to LSU. Now they move on to the NCAA tournament. They're facing a Colgate team, which you would think Arkansas should have no problem with. But as we've talked a little bit about, that's a team that's probably got a lot of seniors. They win a lot of games. And so how do you bounce back from that loss against LSU, move forward, and not let the nervousness of what March Madness brings to the table affect how you play? Well, you're getting Jalen Williams back. And I thought that was as big a reason as any as Arkansas struggled uh, in the first game against Missouri, but ended up winning and then lost to LSU. And you go back to when Arkansas struggled out of the gates in league play, and they were without Justin Smith. So when both of those front liners are in the lineup, Arkansas's only lost two games this season. The other thing is when you go through the grind of SEC play, Arkansas played 17 SEC regular season games, two more in the tournament. You and your opponent, you both get familiar with each other. So I don't care how good the game planning is. At some point, you're more predictable than you are when you get this new slate. It's a new season. And I think the way that Eric Mulsman and his NBA background, he's used to quick turnarounds in an 82-game NBA uh, season. He's used to, you know, having to make changes, not only uh, game planning game to game, but in game. Uh, so when you've got the short turnarounds and different opponents you haven't seen before, I think he'll be, have an advantage breaking all that down relative to maybe other coaches at other programs that don't have his experience. And he's got the talent and the right pieces on this roster to make a run in this tournament. So for Arkansas, you don't hang your head over what happened on Saturday. You get ready to go and you're ready to play any style of basketball and keep and win in advance. Well, we know that Eric Musselman will have his team definitely prepared to go and focused 
on the game at hand that's happening on Friday against Colgate. But you and I can have a little bit of fun because we can take a couple steps down the road, okay? So Arkansas beats Colgate, you would think, between Utah State and Texas Tech. Texas Tech wins that game, and so Arkansas will play the Red Raiders. What do you think about that matchup? Chris Beard had done a great job at Texas Tech. The last NCAA tournament championship that was played two years ago, the Raiders had a shot at winning that. Virginia came out on top, but Texas Tech made it there. This is a team that's, you know, very dangerous. The Big 12's a no-joke conference. Uh, Texas Tech came from behind in the Big 12 SEC Challenge to beat LSU on its home court. We know how tough a matchup LSU was for Arkansas this year. Uh, but Arkansas can win that game. Texas Tech's going to get into Arkansas. They're going to try to dictate tempo. They're going to play fundamental basketball, uh, you know, get into you physically, try to grind out possessions, uh, and, you know, ex expose matchups that favor the mm -hmm. Raiders. Well, mm -hmm. Eric Melsman's a master at that as well, so it'll be very interesting to see how it plays out. I think when you look at the rosters, though, top to bottom and the rotations, I think Arkansas's talent level – is a not just a notch above. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. And I think in a, if that matchup were to happen, Arkansas should be favored. All right. So I got my bracket. I'm filling it out. Arkansas going to the sweet 16. They beat Tech at that point. So now in that lower quadrant, you have Florida, Virginia Tech, Ohio State, and Oral Roberts. Out of those four teams, which one would you have the best feeling of Arkansas facing in the sweet 16? Well, it, obviously, upsets happen in the NCAA tournament, and sometimes a, a two seed can bow out in the first two rounds. It happens uh, sometimes in the first round. Arkansas played Florida and Noel Roberts, and they won both of those games. They were both at home, and even during or, against Noel Roberts, there were good stretches of that game where Arkansas struggled. 15-point second-half lead against Florida. Florida comes back to take a late lead. Arkansas ends up winning by 11. Uh, so you, you have some familiarity there. But I think anytime you could get an upset in those early rounds and you can keep advancing on your part of it, you want that. You would take that. You'd love to play an Oral Roberts or Virginia Tech if you could get them. Uh, but if it's Ohio State or Florida, I think Arkansas is going to have a chance to win those games. Uh, you know, Ohio State coming from the Big Ten, that's a really arguably the best conference in the country. Uh, that team has, you know, been a top 10 team much of the year. And Arkansas, that, you know, I'm not saying that would be a cakewalk by any stretch. Ohio State would probably be favored, but I think Arkansas could win that game. So, you know, get to the Sweet 16, anything can happen. You got to figure if Arkansas does that, they're on a roll and, and Musselman in the group are feeling good. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we know March. We've seen this happen a million times. Anything can happen. Uh, but, you know, you kind of like this draw for Arkansas and how it all shapes out. I know you're going to be covering it for us uh, over on hogville.net as we lead up to game time on Friday. And of course, if you want to read Kevin McPherson stuff, just head on over to hogville.net and, and read what he's got written on the men's basketball team. Kevin, thanks so much for your time. As always, the picture will show rolling on after this.